Is this like um, just a play sand? It is, it's play sand. Yeah, that's cool. It's we important. get to be kids again today. Yeah. We're gonna make yeah. bog bowls. <laughs> it's one of the best activities you get yeah, to Yeah, this so. is real fun. Use play sand because it's sterilized, actually. So oh, that, that helps, actually. That's great. Rather than having um, something that might have more microbes or things. Yeah. In it. So even in your regular bogs, you're using a play sand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Everybody has their own mix, their own yeah. thoughts on it, but. So this and what is this? Well what us. is this now? A mix of this and this? Yes. Yeah, so Wet, uh, when we mix our CP mix. Um, it's five parts peat, this guy, yep. to one part sand. So five big scoops or shovels or however the amount we mm -hmm. use to do it, plus one of these. Um, we're got a hose on there hydrating. I have a cement mixer now that we actually toss oh. it into, yeah. which makes it move a lot faster. Yeah, that's great. And you're not um, putting any kind of like moisture mixture in this. It's just nope. five to one. Okay. Five to one plus yep. water. It expands about five, six times the size of that. Yeah. So it really, uh, really keeps going. Do you think like, cause I, I know a lot of folks, I mean, maybe less here in the United States than in like Europe, there's mm -hmm. like this big ban on peat, but peat, it ge gives that acidity. Do you think you can actually make a kind of a bog with a cocoa, coconut coir, but then you have to use an acidifier? I definitely um, think it's worth, you know, further experimenting, experimenting yeah. with. And we have been doing some experimenting here as far as just seeing the conditions that you can push these plants. Yeah. Um, it's a difficult one to fully answer. Uh, I definitely, it's something that we just got to keep taking uh into consideration yeah. as far as the, the whole industry goes. It's kind so. of interesting though, because it's like peat comes from boggy areas yep. and you're kind of creating a boggy area. So you're like kind of putting the peat back in a bog. Exactly. Maybe so not the making, bog it came from, but a but bog, this yeah. this man-made bog with yeah. it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely a constant experimentation process. How many bog bowls have you made in your Ooh. Tender life here, two two and a half years at the. Bog. So uh, I'm fortunate to get to take, teach a class every year. Oh, and that's so cool. So during that class of He's creating Professor bog, bog bowls, bowl. yes, yes, <laughs> uh, we usually have a couple dozen students on that. Yeah, we all fun. go through making them. Um, I personally myself would see maybe thirty to forty. Wow, it's okay. not a ton, but like yeah. you know, I, you're, you're not a slouch. On, you know, yeah. you've you've done a few in your life. Yeah, you're, just, yeah you're not you're not. Green, as they would say, you're not new to the to the field. You not are new. green, but you're green. <laughs> yes, totally. Okay. So uh, let's begin, I guess. Yeah. So what I got here is the different layers uh, for a bog bowl. Uh, one thing I'd start with is selecting, you know, your container. Mm -hmm. um, I'm usually looking for an anti-frost uh, or a, a thicker ceramic container that's yeah. not going to freeze and shatter. Um, because one thing to consider is you do need to have a winter dormancy period with um, your carnivorous plants. They want that seasonality. Maybe you don't have to leave them fully exposed mm -hmm. outside all year, but in the winter you could move it into your garage where it ask, still yeah. cools down mm -hmm. um, so that they, they can go dormant. Hmm. And then um, you're using a more like low-lying bowl. Yeah, sense, typically, yeah. yeah, I like the lower-lying bowls um, rather than a really deep one. Mm -hmm. While the roots will continue to, you know, use the space that you give them, uh, this kind of provides a great uh, retention of you have moisture evenly spaced mm -hmm. wider. Yeah. Um, this one has a rim on it, so mm -hmm. it actually um, will fill up with water. Uh, I often see them without rims, but I've, I've had good success with both of these style pots. I guess it probably depends also on where you're going to display it too, right? You That's know? totally it. The balance yeah. of finding um, a place that has full sun yeah. or the most sun you can give it. Right. Um, but then watching it to make sure it stays moist. Yeah. So it's something that you, you'll be checking maybe not every day, but mm -hmm. every other day, every third day at least to make sure you don't get a crust forming on the mm -hmm. top. Great. Um, so let's see, so let's begin. So usually uh, this one has one hole in mm -hmm. it. We have three holes in the bottom of that mm -hmm. one. I will take one of these um, plant fiber mats mm -hmm. here and I just typically put it right down in the bottom. Okay, and then I can I'll do that, that too. as well. And so that's just gonna prevent us from losing more soil mix as time right. goes on. Okay. Um, right above that, I kind of recreate it just as if we were doing a small, but 
of the bug pod. What about this horticultural charcoal? You didn't mention that, but where does that oh, go? I haven't mentioned that. So okay. that is also going to be a liner layer just to add with some moisture um, retention, but also allow it to drip out the bottom. Okay, great. So Probably we'll, prevents bacterial buildup as well then too. Yeah, right? it doesn't bit. get as swampy yeah. as, uh, it definitely, um, if you're overwatering, that's yeah. a good sign as you start smelling that funk. Yeah. Like, mm, okay, maybe let's back off on yeah, that a little yeah. bit. Um, so you pointed it out and you were, you, you were feeling the right uh, step yeah. process here. I'm just gonna pour yeah. uh, just a light layer and we'll spread that out. It honestly doesn't take too much. I'll be smudging my face afterwards. You know, oh yeah, you, you get a little, <laughs> little bit of charcoal on the fingers. <laughs> I'm gonna set this one over here. Next layer is I put a little bit of sand on top, mm -hmm. so actually we can pour that. And so when you say you like add like in the regular bog, maybe three inches of sand or whatever, what do you do here, but especially when it's so much smaller uh, uh, of, a, of a thing? You just kind of just eyeball it? I just kind of eyeball it. Yeah. So um, we don't need to do too thick of a layer of sand. It really just depends on your bowl. Oh gosh, it's so um, fun to play with sand. Yeah, you can just <laughs> add it right over the charcoal. That's great. And you will notice if you uh, are renovating your bog bowls mm -hmm. and removing plants, the the roots will typically go right to the top of the sand. And, and, so it, and it just stays there. They kind of stay in there. You know, maybe a very old mature plant's gonna start yeah. going through that sand. Is but. it just because you're creating these layers and it doesn't like to hit through like a, an unlike layer? Or how does that work? Because sometimes when you're like planting a tree and if you, yes. they, they say now it's not, it's like a faux pas to amend the soil in the, you have clay around it and then you mend the soil with some nice like frilly compost and stuff and then the, the tree roots don't want to come out. Is that a similar kind of thing? Or I would is it say, just... yeah, very okay. similar. So okay. and especially um, you'll see plants move to, you know, what they like the most. Uh -huh. So whether that be a little extra wet or um, a better mix, um, they do move. And yeah. It, it, you'll see that so <laughs> i for this purpose you know you can kind of prevent them from totally rooting out the bottom of the pot right um and our next layer here. and this is the five to one feet this is the five cement to one mix, feet. mixed and so we want like at least two inches of okay. uh the cp mix the more the better um, but I'll raise it all the way to the rim of your bowl because it so this is kind of like the final layer then yes really yes. okay this feels nice too. That cement mixer. I don't know if you had. That's how you mixed it, but it feels nice. <laughs> this one was a hand mix. It so. almost feels like compost, you know. Yeah. So I do the same in here, and then really pack that down. Okay. Um, so really firm it in. Yes. You want a pretty firm um, mix that'll slowly let water drain mm -hmm. through it. It doesn't want to. You don't want that water to escape too quickly. I guess you're kind of like, you know, pretending about like you're making those bog layers that just over the years just kind of compress in there. Yeah, that slow breakdown. Yeah. Let's see, we'll probably go through all of this. Mm -hmm. You definitely start seeing moisture pop out the top of that, which is a good sign. Oh, it's yeah, well you're really, hydrated. Yeah. That's kind of also when you're testing like your compost mix and everything, you're trying to, you know, make it, it's just, just squeezes just a tiny little bit of water out. Yeah. I feel like I'm giving the earth a massage, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, with bog bowls, you're definitely, I mean, with any, any plants, you're working yeah. close to the soil, but this, it's something that I, instead of just eyeballing it, I'm constantly feeling that moisture yeah. to know, hey, do I need to water it today? Yeah. So we got that, I might add a little bit more. Yeah, you might need it. You you yeah. have a bigger bowl than I do. Yeah, a little bit <laughs> bigger bowl. And then, let's see. Well, pretty much to the top, but when we are planting things, obviously we're gonna be removing pieces of soil. Right, to, exactly. It'll expand a little higher, but I think this is like, Perfect. There's something really therapeutic about this, you know? Oh just really cool. And for anybody, I think this is perfect for anybody who can't, like obviously not everybody has a backyard to be able to assemble something, but 
you know, this is something that you could even do, provided that you're watching your, your water, you could do for like on the back of a patio or your fire escape or something like that. Yes, it works really well yeah. out of the patio. Awesome. Voila, yeah, you're cool. looking good so far. Nice. Now the really fun part begins. You get to pick your plants. So, picking your plants and obviously we were fortunate to be yeah. doing this, the botanic garden. A lot of the plants in this tub here, we have a couple different types of pitchers. Yeah. And these are fresh divisions uh, created from things in the past year. We have some white top pitcher plants, which typically I like to put more towards the center mm -hmm. of the bowl. They're the tallest. Uh, we have a couple of the uh, yellow pitcher plants. Um, here's an Alabama pitcher plant, mm -hmm. actually. It's kind of cool. Know. They look a little wiry, you know? Yeah, yeah, as they really begin with those new leaves. They, yeah. They're, you don't think of them as a pitcher yet, but yeah. they're, they're getting up there. I got a parrot head. Um, actually, this is a large clump of parrot head. Here's yeah. a new bud emerging from that. Some fly traps we'll use, bog Cheetos, um, even that Carolina red root. Yeah, mm. So, and we could also add even sundews, and I have some spare uh, skull caps, violets, whatever <laughs> we want to do. And then what's this underneath? So this is and our these... topper. Um, okay. I have a moss farm going. This is sphagnum moss. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is what we use to layer the top of the bog just for extra moisture mm -hmm. retention. I'll take sprouts of that and push them into new CP mix. I leave them in the back alley just to get the sun and water naturally. and. They start slowly filling out, so we we'll use it to top it. And then what's this one? That oh, these are the, some older uh, oh, leucophilus. See. But that's so cool to see what they look like. Look at that rhizome. You know, it's kind of like like you yeah, said, like if you go to the cattail or whatever. You know, it's like very similar. That's cool. Yeah. Or like a ginger root or something. That kind of have like a ginger yeah. iris vibe. Yeah. They'll eventually split into uh, Y's, and that's really what I'm looking for when I'm dividing ones from the ball. I I'll look see. at that okay. Y and then cut it off. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so then we, can we just like <coughs> shovel like some of this stuff? So or? what I would say, um, it's easy to actually pull out. Okay. Uh, if you kind of grab it from the base and yeah. slowly just shake it out. Okay, yeah, just like that. Do it just Ooh. like that. You're gonna see that full root ball on there. Yeah. So that's a great center piece, but whatever one you wanna use, I, like I think I'm not gonna, look. I think you're gonna do center. I think I'm gonna do something that, ah. that's a little more, uh, Okay, okay. A little, in, something different, you know? If you do the center, I'm gonna do the, the edge. Definitely. Now let's see, maybe I can use these to put any extra soil in that we're temporarily moving. Okay. I always say like, like pack the soil in there first. I know you're gonna end up removing some, yeah. but it just really helps keep things more even as you okay. go. Some of these plants will have deeper roots on there, so I might give them a larger hole. There's an, ooh, that's a good root grouping. And we're gonna kind of sink them in here slowly. I want to make sure none of the roots are really exposed. Right. Um, one thing I didn't mention, but we'll mention now, is with the pitcher plants, you don't want to bury their crowns. So okay. you really oh, want to so make do I, sure. Did I bury mine? I wonder. I would say maybe just a little bit higher. Okay. So they're kind of riding the surface okay. of the soil. Ride that surface um, of the soil. All yes. Right. Yeah. See, I couldn't even wait. I couldn't even wait for the instruction. Oh, I just wanted, don't. I just wanted it's to. It's really put exciting. It. I, I know. know you can help, but you're like, all right, this is great. Look at this little root kind of sticking out right here. Oh, is yeah. that a root? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that might be... of, it's funky. They, they're like funky looking. Okay, I yeah, will I have to say some, some of these out. clusters may have other unique wetland species mm. hiding among them. I'm going to take it and then you really just pack in around those rhizomes. You might have to slowly adjust and push some underneath there. Right. But rather firm. So I got like my one Leucophila center piece You gotta here. tuck them in, tuck them in. And they'll definitely um, rearrange based on where you're gonna place it in the right. sunlight there. So, okay. you know, you might have some wobbly ones off kilter, yeah. but we'll figure it out. Let's see, what else do I need here? I think I'm gonna go Venus. Oh, gotta have a beautiful. These get some really cool trap. flowers too. I like the flowers that come out of the Venus fly traps. So I, I mentioned a little bit on the larger bog tour, but one thing I definitely want to keep reminding, 
any viewer of anybody considered doing this is just the, the ethics of plant collection. Um, I'm not encouraging anybody whatsoever to collect things from the wild. Right. Um, sources, making sure that you have a reliably ethically collected source or nursery. You need to ask them the questions, where did you get these things? How have you been growing them? And really make sure that they have a response and are able to get that to you, not just, I wouldn't say quickly, but you want yeah. them to be able to have the responses and do the research on there. Um, there's a great network of carnivorous plant uh, lovers out there on Facebook, um, other social media sites. Everybody's happy to share messages about these plants and mm -hmm. where you can acquire them. Um, I would say if you're seeing things come up on eBay or Craigslist, that's a little bit odd. Um, or even on definitely... Etsy. I found some really, you know, kind of shady things sometimes on Etsy, surprisingly now. Right. Yeah. And so uh, I'm sure there could be valid uh, growers out there on those sites, but try to find your reputable sites and really contribute to the, the protection of these plants. And the other thing along with that is use hybrid species. That's right. And like you said, with the hybrid vigor, you know, that could, that could, uh, that could help on, you know, especially on having plants that survive more easily. They're hardier, especially yeah. in these small little ecosystems, these pots, you might have a, a hardier plant do a little better. Yeah. This is fun. He took the, he took the bog Cheetos. I was not going to go for the bog Cheetos. Okay. This is my absolute favorite one. <laughs> It's like a little gomphrina or something, yeah, like a tiny little, you know, yeah. And as they get older, um, that stack of flowers, so maybe you eventually be an inch tall. Uh-huh, so cool. Be a little bigger. He's gonna go for a little white, something white. Hmm. Like what about, so these are little violets? Those are bog violets. Okay. Um, I have a knife that can separate some yeah, of those off would if you, you'd like. Yeah, what's the best way? Let's try this okay. one. So this has been, by seed I've been growing this oh, one. Nice. So it's ready to move. Oh yeah. This oh, is a fully very, rooted out it uh, is specimen fully here. Rooted, yeah. And so what I think we'll do um, is on the outside. Nice and fibrous. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll take slowly divide some out. There we go. How many would you like? Uh, just a little clump, please. A little clump, yeah. okay. So we're gonna it's work on this outside. a little clump. <laughs> Try to get all the roots all the way down. There we go. Slowly. Yes, that's perfect. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. It's also neat to see all the different types of root structures and stuff. The Carolina red root, so I have a piece of that that's extending out here. Yeah. There's your red root. Ah. Uh, red, red. I think I might move this one over a little bit. Do I want this here? Now, today I don't have any orchid species here that we're going to add to our bog bowls. Ooh, that but seems a little luxurious. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's definitely um, uh, some of those spiranthes, those lady truss orchids. Yeah. Um, Easier to find and ethically find. Um, those definitely make a great occasion when they come in here every, you know, it's like, they might take a year off in between flowering mm. too. So it's just different seasons, different, different blooms. I think I'm getting pretty full here, you know? Oh, my little bowl. Awesome. What do we got, five, six, seven plants? Yeah, I think one, that's two, definitely three, a four, five, nice four, five, six, four, yeah, one. yeah. Because they're going to spread, too, I would imagine. Exactly. Right? Uh, I've definitely, over the years, created some very full ones to yeah. start, some more sparse ones to start. Um, definitely the ones, it, it's a little bit of less is more. Yeah. Um, they will take a couple of years to spread out, but once they do, especially these sundews, you know, uh -huh. if you let them go to seed, um, they might germinate all throughout the whole, the whole pot there. So... Um, Patience, as with any plant. Because things. I think even filling in some of the sphagnum in there look really nice. Yeah, the sphagnum effects, so I got a little bit of that. I think I'm gonna add one fly trap here. And 
that'll be my side. I have, I almost have one more space for something to hang over. I, I think mm. I don't. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. We have. There is another. I could also do another fly trap. We have. But, uh, let's see. Bog cheeto. Yeah. We got a purple honeycomb head. Ooh. <laughs> a beautiful asteraceous species. And Baldwinia. This, these are cool. We didn't go with any of the bushy plants, I have to say. Probably pour on my composition. Get a, a six on my composition, but. <laughs> I think it looks it looks like a 10 to me. That's <laughs> Come on, you're being too this generous. Fall, no. <laughs> it's all about doing your own thing. And, yeah. I mean, with the plants being in these containers, uh, you, you know, you can change it around year to year if you want. You can add things, subtract but I, things. I honestly like divide. how. It's just, it's more wild. It's yeah. more naturescaping. It's not so um, perfect. You know, oftentimes when you see like kind of suburban gardens, you have like just your four plants and all your mulch and everything like this. This is much more wildscaped. You know, some of the um, encroachments that are coming in there, maybe things that you want to weed or need to weed, but it kind of it kind of makes the look, you know, a bit more meadow-esque, even yes. in a bog, you know? You want things to blend together. You want yeah. things to move. And I think, you know, respecting how things move, that really teaches you what you can take advantage of. Uh, it's definitely an ecosystem that changes over Yeah, time. and I like a knitted landscape. I like things knitted yeah. together versus just like sparsely here, 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 here. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Um, awesome. So Yours you is got... looking great too. I, I mean, I feel like I filled mine in a lot more, but I thought this I was awesome. leaving breathing room, but I was like, nah. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> more is more. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't okay. believe it. We got these. This nice fly trap. Yeah, it's, I, I, liked, I liked it actually like hanging over like a little edge hang. Oh, excellent. Okay, so let's let's uh, take our, our fresh moss. Okay. Swag in here. This is our mossing tool. <laughs> just a pencil. Um, so what, and you can use your fingertip as mm -hmm. well. But generally I just will take a little, push that in a couple inches. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna scoop a sprout off here. Sometimes they're really long ones. Just like that, that's mm -hmm. a pretty nice cluster actually. Mm -hmm. So, there we go, I'll take it like that. Kind of bundle it up a little bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna sink that root. Ah, it's almost like, back in there. it's like almost like an alpine planting and you're trying to get in this like tiny little hole. Yeah, yeah. and then pack it in a little bit oh, like that. Okay. Um, that's been my most successful method with Interesting. the moving moss. Okay, so then is moss sometimes like one of those uh, things that is hard to transplant that it doesn't always take? It can be. Yeah. You just don't, you definitely don't want to let it dry out. Once it right. dries out, it might have a hard time coming back. Um, and I've, I've definitely layered pieces of moss on there before uh -huh. and had success with that. I just generally like to do the little, uh, the pencil method okay. and plugging it in. So I'm gonna just keep doing that around all sections here. Oops, sorry. That's okay. And then how much are you kind of adding? Are you trying to just, you know, I'm just kind of sporadically yeah. pushing it around different areas of the bog. So as the year goes on, it'll slowly turn into larger right. patches. And I've also noticed these little bog, uh, moss areas really catch the sundew seeds. Yeah. So if they, you do let them flower, it's great that the, the sundews will germinate right there on top of the moss. Now, I know if you're growing carnivorous plants indoors that you have to be very cautious on the kind of water that you're giving them, like a more distilled water and whatnot. Yeah, what, generally. What are you doing for these? Like, how, could, how would you be able to upkeep the care of these since you're probably gonna be watering them if it's not raining outside? I've definitely read distilled water is the way to go, and yeah. I'm sure they prefer that. The um, bog itself is fortunate to receive water that goes through our chiller that runs the high elevation house in the Orchid Center. Okay. So it kind of gets that specially treated water as well. Uh -huh. But that is a combination of city water um, as well as what goes through the chiller. Interesting, okay. Um, at home, I've, I've had good success with just my hose water. So you might really? want to check okay. the, the pH of your actual water. Mm -hmm. um, make sure it's not too uh, basic. Mm -hmm. Too alkaline, too basically. Al yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, not not too basic. Yeah, it's such it's so basic. That water is so basic. Yes. <laughs> Which um, you know, if you live in a limestone area where your mm. water's passing through limestone, you'd often have a more alkaline water. I know some places in Florida have more alkaline water because it, it goes through limestone. Let me just get right. A bit so more. yeah, it depends on your place how that water is being yep. treated. It's going pretty good. One thing I do love about bog bowls mm -hmm. is. Um, you know, you start getting the, those fungus gnats that are maybe emerging out oh, of your yeah. indoor plants. Yeah. Um, and they're like, ooh, this looks like a great place to lay my eggs. Yes. All nice they, and they, wet. They, they love all yeah. the soil. Yeah. But if you have some sundews in there, uh -huh. uh, go good... ahead, bring it in. Yep. Maybe that sundews will help yep. clean up that those fungus gnats. Um, we definitely, I've brought them in inside for a couple of days at a time and they'll be covered in yeah. gnats. Um, and just move them back outside, give them that sunlight. Um, they're definitely powerhouses, these little plants. Cool. Whoa. That looks very lush, very it's full. Very lush. Look I at that. I'm such a lush. I'm these a lush when it comes plants. to plants. I'm so excited. Ah, <laughs> uh, ta da! Ta da! Okay, there are our bog bowls. Look at that. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> ta da! Oh, yeah. Should we say hello? Yes. <laughs> nice Thank work. you. Thank you for allowing me to do that. That's fun to just get my hands dirty a little bit. Normally we do these like kind of tours, but now we got something to do hands on and oh. you get to take a little slice of like the bog back. Well, I don't because I'm going on a plane, so you're going to have to display this somewhere else. <laughs> we'll keep this playing. I'll send you photos throughout the season. That's I'm excited great. to see what it does. Awesome. Thank, thank you for, you know, letting me uh, show you some of these Yeah. Great Great charismatic. Yeah, plants. add add to your numbers of notches of bog bowls that you've been building. We got another one. We got yep. another guest one. Yes. Awesome. Stay tuned on Plant One On Me for more botanical tours, talks, and how tos. And if you're looking to further your knowledge on the plant kingdom, then have a look at our various online courses from Troubleshoot Your House Plants to the House Plant Masterclass. Additionally, we have a second channel called Flock Finger Lakes, where we cover more on outdoor gardening, habitat restoration, agroforestry, and even more. So check that out if that interests you. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode.